the reply to this misconception that Islam was paired with the sword is given very well by a famous historian by the name of Delacy O'Leary. Famous historian, Delacy O'Leary. He writes in his book, Islam at the Crossroad, on page number eight, and he says that history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. Delethi O'Leary writes in his book Islam at the Crossroad that history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. And we know that we Muslims, we ruled Spain for about 800 years. We did not force anyone to accept Islam at the point of the sword. Later on the Crusaders came and they wiped out the Muslim. There was not a single Muslim who could openly give the Azan. The Muslims, we were the lord of the Arab land for the past 1400 years. For a few years the Britishers came, for a few years the French came, but as a whole, the Arab Muslims were the lord of the Arab land for the past 1400 years. Yet today, yet today, there are more than 14 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians. Coptic Christians means Christians since generations. These 14 million Coptic Christian Arabs they are bearing witness, they are giving shahada that Islam was not spread by the sword. The Muslims ruled India for about a thousand years. If they wanted, they could have forced every Indian to accept Islam at the point of the sword. Today, after a thousand years, we find in India that more than 80% of the Indians, they are non-Muslims. These 80% non-Muslims Indian, they are bearing witness, they are giving shahada that Islam was not spread by the sword. Which Muslim army, which Muslim army went to Malaysia? Malaysia happens to be a country which has more than 50% Muslims. Which Muslim army went to Indonesia? Which is a country which has the maximum number of Muslims in the world? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? Which Muslim army? Which sword? Thomas Carlyle gives a reply. He again is a famous historian from Europe. And he says, which sword? First you have to get your sword. Every new idea originates in the mind of one. In one man's head it originates. One man against the full world. One against everyone else. It will do little good that he picks up a sword and propagates it. First you have to get your sword. He is referring to the sword of intellect, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. We have statistics today. There are articles that came in the Plain Truth magazine, which was a reproduction of the Ridajas al Almanac yearbook. 1986, it gave the statistics of the increase in the major world religion in a span of 50 years between 1934 to 1984 and it said that number one religion to grow maximum was Islam 235 percent in a span of 50 years Islam grew by 235 percent Christianity only 47 percent I am asking a question which war took place between 1934 and 1984 which forced the non-Muslim to accept Islam? <laughs> which war? Today, the fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in UK is Islam. I am asking a question <laughs> that I want to know that which Muslim is forcing the Americans to accept Islam? I am asking the question that which Muslim is forcing the Europeans to accept Islam? There's freedom of speech in America. There's freedom of speech in Europe. And I gave a talk in the morning and I said, the topic was women in Islam, protected or subjugated, and the media maligns the women and say the women are subjugated. Then how come those people accepting Islam, two-thirds of them are women? 
If Islam subjugates women, then why should the non-Muslim women accept Islam? Because Islam has the solution to the problems of the humankind. According to statistics of care, it's the Council of America in Washington. It said that two months after 11 September, two months after 11 September, 20,000 Americans accepted Islam. And after the 11th September, I was there on the 9th of September, two days before I left. Otherwise, I too would have been. <laughs> I was there in UK. And after 11 September, in a span of just hardly five, six months, thrice I was called to UK only to give talks on terrorism. And it's good. The act is bad. Act is bad. What Salman Rushdie did. What Salman Rushdie wrote against the Prophet was bad. But people wanted to know what did Salman Rushdie write and they read the Quran to find the truth and they accepted Islam. Today in America, these are statistics from the leading newspaper of America, even New York Times, it said the American wants to know that can I have a Bible of the Muslims? They don't even know that Quran is the holy book. They want to read the Bible of the Muslims. It's good. And the moment you have interaction with the truth, as I started my talk by quoting a verse of the Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, which says, وَقُلْ جَالْ حَقْ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ لَبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَوْكَ When truth is heard like in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. We have to use the sword of intellect, the sword of reasoning, which is conquering the hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, He gives a promise in the Quran in no less than three different places. In Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 33. In Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 9. As well as in Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 20, with a different ending, Allah says, Huwa lazi arsala rasulahu bil huda. What deen al haq? Liyuz hero al deen kulli. Allah has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other isms. And Islam is destined to supersede all the other isms. And Allah says, however much the unbelievers don't like it. And Allah gives a different ending in Surah Fatah, chapter 14, verse 28, which says, Waqafa billahi shayda. And enough is Allah as a witness. I would like to end my talk of this topic terrorism and jihad and Islamic perspective with a quotation and a statement of Dr. Adam Pearson, who said, People who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad was born. Thank you, Dr. Zakir Naik. Now I call upon Brother Hayat Khan to felicitate the speaker of the day, Dr. Zakir Naik, and the chief guest. Now we begin with the more interesting part of the program, that is, the question-answer session. Please pose one question at a time. May we have the first question?